Well, I think we'll get started. The, um, again, I have to apologize for having to go um, so fast through this material. Uh, it's really uh, difficult to uh, absorb two or three chapters uh, in, in even in two weeks. And we're, we're asking you to do more. And I think, really, in my mind, it's being forced on us by the fact that we have to squeeze in a certain number of labs. And uh, we don't do labs when there are exams, so we lose a couple of weeks there. And we can't do labs on the first week because we don't know enough. So we squeeze the labs in, and we have to catch up to the labs. And you have to know something before you go in. So you have to squeeze in a lot of stuff before your first lab, uh, which was this week. How did it go, by the way, this so far? Was it OK, the rebel analyst? Great, great, great. Um, so I did want to, first of all, ask any questions. Yes, sir. Say it again, please. Louder. That's true. We, we, we kind of we're able to slow down. Once we know enough, we can slow down. You see that the number of chapters gets down to maybe two at most a week. The chapters are short. I mean, they're like 10 pages. So it isn't like you have to read a whole novel in a week, which is what you're doing in other courses. But uh, uh, yeah, it, it gets better. I think it gets more easily paced. And one of the things I'm going to do is because we've rushed through some stuff already, I'm going to try to fill in what I sort of skipped over, you know, try to sort of work it into the next level of things. Um, <clears throat> so yes, things will get better. And I hope my, um, my rushing will, will slow down a little bit too. Oh, by the way, I did come across a very nice uh, online physics teacher. He's probably better than I am, frankly. But, uh, but he goes through very methodically uh, showing how to do things in a simple way. He calls himself a f um, freelance. Do you know this fellow? He's good, isn't he? Freelance teach or something? Tutor teach or something? Yeah, he, he goes through things in a very nice, quiet way. And he has some woman <laughs> in the audience that he asks her, and she gives an answer, and it's, it's nice. Um, and so if you want to see things gone through in a slow, methodical fashion on how to do these concepts, good. What I'm trying to do is bring in other things, namely real world applications, which he doesn't do. He doesn't do any demos. He doesn't talk about w w what's in the real world that's anything like this, as far as I can tell. He's any of the ones I've seen. Um, so, for example, he's not gonna, he, he doesn't do what, what I've been doing. He's trying to give you, for example, analogies to water flow. He just does electricity and magnetism, which is good. It's good. It's a good way to go. Um, and, okay, so here, I want to, somebody, yes, ma'am. Oh, units, as we go along, try to put the units in. Uh, yes, it, it would be very good because units are, you're right, a very powerful check on whether you're doing the right things because you can't have come out in apples and the other side is oranges. It's got to be right. You're quite right. I'll try to do that. I rush through things, and sometimes I make mistakes too, which I hope you'll correct. Um, but the, one of the things that some of the students after last lecture came up, and they were having difficulty with the idea of things being at the same potential. You have a comp fairly complicated circuit like that. Well, um, reason complicated. Let me draw it up here. Uh, Oh, two of them over here, all of the same magnitude. And this one is straight across. And then you have yet another one here. And then presumably there's a, a voltage applied across here. So I was saying things like the potential should be uniform over here across this set here. So that idea may be a little bit hard for you to grasp at first. So for what it's worth, here's a, um, a water analogy of it. What I'm trying to say here is that I'm, I'm representing the wires by very big pipes, such that there's no restriction on flow. It doesn't lose any pressure in going through those large tubes. Then you have, I don't know if this helps. So let me know if this is a good thing. Then you have the first, re the first reason. Also, what I'm doing, I'm turning it this way. So all the resistors are in series going from up and down. So I have water flowing down through this series of pipes. That's what we have here. We have that circuit could be turned around. Let me do it. Uh, it should, I don't know if it'll make it any easier, but it, the same thing. You see, I can turn it this way, turn it this way, turn it this way, turn it this way. This connects here. And see, that's across a voltage. So that's, so that's the analogy here. OK, you see that? And maybe that's easier to see how the water is going to flow. It's going to flow down. There's a resisted element, sort of the colored one, there. They're all the same, as I can make it, the same size, same diameter, same length. So the water is pumped up by the EMF. Somehow there's some manner to get the electrons, or the plus charges in this case, up to, the, up to there. They flow down through this narrow constriction, and they reach a big pipe, which is that upper, that upper wire there. It's a, a wire, so it has no pressure across it. That's the upper pipe. Then it runs through the first pipe restriction, and then it reaches a junction. It was split here. Then there's a wire, so they have also no pressure. Then you have a water can flow down the left side through a narrow constriction, or two narrow constrictions, also with a junction, which I put in uh, another big pipe. But that causes no loss. And then you reach a, a junction here, which is a big pipe, and then you come through the last pipe. Okay? So that's what's happening. And in the process, it loses pressure as you go down and down. Okay, I don't know if that helps, but uh, somehow we always do diagrams like that. I don't know why. Maybe uh, just to get into the page of a book. But if you really look at it this way, the electric, if you want to think of it almost as the electrons or positive charges in fact current passing through one obstacle, splitting, passing through two obstacles, one obstacle on the left side, and then one further obstacle below. Does that help? Yes. So we just get the voltage Yeah. The yes. The voltage is yes. Because you see, what, at that point, you have these big pipes here. There's no pressure. Current doesn't. Yeah, if you were a current, you, you would prefer to go through the one pipe rather than two. In fact, if those are equal, twice as much will flow through this one than the two, because this, the one on the right side represents two obstacles. If, if, those, if, they're, if they're equal. But they don't always have to be equal. I can make a problem harder. So this problem has to be they're all equal. That's why I said that, that they will split one by one. But it, it could be very general. Uh, you know, uh, right, the, the problem has to say that all the R's are equal. But it doesn't have to be. This could be R1. This could be R2. This could be R3. It wouldn't really matter. R, R4. This could be R5. All different. And what, in, in this diagram, what it would be is that the pipes would be a little narrower. The resistive pipes would be narrower longer or more clogged or something like that, but they'd be different, each one different. OK, now let me, um, let's go through a very simple exercise, if I may. Tell me if I'm boring you. But, you know, if you know all this, I hate to bore you. But suppose I took a voltmeter, 
and I measure the voltage. I put one here. This is, let's say this is plus, and this is minus. And I put one terminal here, my negative terminal, and I have my voltmeter. And I measure various points along here. I'm going to ask you, what will I measure? I have a certain, well, usually we call this the EMF, because I'll write it as an EMF. Now, here's a voltmeter. Suppose I take the other side of the voltmeter. I should have done this on the resistance board. I didn't think of it at the time. And I measure the other side over here. What will I measure? So let me call this uh, point A. I'll keep this one fixed at this point. What will I measure at A? Anybody guessing? Huh? Say it louder, please. Yeah, you're going to measure E. You're gonna, uh, the, the voltmeter will measure E. Why? Because I'm measuring right across this thing, right across the, the electromotive force, right across the battery. OK, now suppose I, measure, I, I take my connector, maybe I'll do it in different colors. Uh, suppose I connect it to here. What will I measure? Be brave. Same thing. And why? Huh? It's, yeah, there's no loss on these wires. Well, that's the big, broad pipe that, that has no, no pressure loss on it. So if I measure here, I'll measure also the electromotive force. Okay. Even if I measure all the way up to here, right? OK, now suppose I measure to here. Aha. <laughs> it's getting harder. What do I measure? Yeah? Well, that's a good question. Suppose I, suppose I even put it, see, all this is one wire. This is all, so even if I measured it here or here or here, I get the same thing because that's a piece of metal and the conductor is the same. So it doesn't matter exactly where I put it as long as I put it on the wire. Good point, important point. Well, what you'll measure, this is actually, this is a good way I think of doing it. Uh, let's say this is point C, huh? anywhere on here because they're all connected. You see, it's all a wire, so that's point C. Uh, well, what the meter will measure is it's E minus the voltage drop in this resistor, R1. See, what's happened is that I put a certain amount of pressure here. You're going to lose something in this resistor. You're going to lose the voltage drop in this resistor. So what you got is what you see was E over here, did you literally here, but you lost IR here. Now, I haven't really calculated what I is. That, that's a good grammar, what I is. I is, no. I, uh, well, I, actually, I could find it if I found the total, here it is, the equivalent resistance of this whole set of resistors, which I can do by the rules we have. You have a series, you have a parallel combination, series. We can do that later if you like. But let's just maybe do it qualitatively here. So I have a certain amount of current, which I've determined by the, this equivalent resistor. It passes through here, and a certain amount drops. Then I have this complicated thingy here, which I would replace. Let's say, let's say I then want to find the, the voltage at, um, let me get a different, at this point, point E. Suppose I could uh, f um, solve this little problem here. Well, actually, I, I will solve it for you. R of this parallel part right here, just here. Remember I said you can do it by, um, you, you take the product of the two res of resistors, R1, R2, over R1 plus R2. Well, th these two are in series, so they represent basically one resistor of magnitude R3 plus R4. That's one resistor, in a way, in parallel with R2. So I multiply that by R2. And then I add them all, I add the resistors. So it'll be R3 plus R4 plus R2. So that is, that's, that's the resistance of this parallel combination. Right? Because think of this as a series. These two together represent one resistor. They're in series. You just add them. And then they're in parallel with R2 here. That's supposed to be a 2. And so that'll be the total resistance of this. So if I were to measure the voltage here, see the same current is flowing through. Think of this now as one resistor, this RP. So the, the voltage at D, uh, let me make it the same thing. The voltage on the meter will be the electromotive force. It's lost I times R1 here. It's going to lose I times R parallel in this set. So it's going to, and it'll be down by both. So, so I've lost IR1, I and I also have lost IR parallel if I were to measure that there. Does that make sense? I'm losing what's called voltage drops on each thing. I've combined all of this into one object. I think somebody asked me what happens to the currents here. That's a whole other thing. But the voltage drop is the same across both of these. This thing and this thing, because this point is the same. You see the voltage is across this whole thing. The currents will be different. Maybe, uh, unless these two are equal, the current, will be different. the current will take the easiest path. And we can figure out how it does that. OK, and then, all right, let's do one more. Uh, let's say I would measure to, to this point, which is point CDE. Okay, anybody want to venture? Guess E, V on the meter will be zero is right. <laughs> but I could write it this way. I, I started out with E. I lost uh, I times R1 on R1. I lost I times R parallel on R parallel. And I lost I times R5 on R5. And all of that gets me back to zero. So that's Kirchhoff's law, that the sum of the voltages around the circuit are zero. And all I've done is I started out with a certain amount of energy. I lost part of it in here, part of it in here, part of it in here, and then I got none left when I come back. So that's how you Yes, questions? Yeah, well, no. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yes, no. Good question. Is it IR5? Uh, yeah, I guess so, because if, um, if I subtract D from, uh, yeah, yeah, it would be IR5. Is that correct? Point at D. 
Yes, yes, if you take, if, mm, let's see. Um, I, think, I think you may be right. I'm trying to see if I can go from here to here easily. Uh, I'm not so sure because I'm measuring, I'm measuring, oh, from here, yeah, I'm measuring from here to here. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Because my terminal, one terminal is here, my plus terminal, and my negative terminal is here. Yes, you're right, it'll be IR5. Right, very good, way back. Can you speak up? We want to be recorded as well, yes. I was afraid somebody would ask that. <laughs> yeah, between here, that's a really good question. Uh, what do you think? Um, you got a certain voltage drop IR parallel across the whole thing. So it's the voltage drop between here and here is going to be less than the IR, the, the whole voltage. So part, part of the current's going to go through here and be drop here, and the rest of it's going to drop here to make a whole IRP. So it will be less, you'll have part, partial drop here and partial drop there. If you like, you should fig figure this out. Um, see, that's, that's the kind of thing that really should go on in the uh, in discussion section. Um, but you, you want to simply, well, the way I would do it, frankly, is I would start out figuring out what the total current is. And then when I come to this point, I know the current going in is this way, right? And so it splits. Um, I could, yeah, okay, this is good. So I have RP. So I can get the voltage across this whole thing. V on uh, the parallel part is equal to uh, I times R sub P. So then I know the voltage across th this one, for example, which one do we call that, R2? No, it can't be. Oh, it is R2, okay, R2. And this is R3 and R4. Okay, so then I can find the current, because I know, I know the total resistance, right? And I know the total voltage. So I know the voltage across R2 is Vp. So the current in number two here is I, is, is this Vp that I calculated over R2. So that's how I get the current in R2. And I get the current in R3 by saying, I know the voltage Vp, and I know that the current is gonna be R3 over R4, uh, the resistance of that series combination. So, and then, so this will give me the split of the currents. This will give me I2 going here, and I3 going here. And I, two and I three add up to the original I. And, and these, uh, that, you see, you, you know the voltage across the whole thing. And then you can take that voltage and each, each individual resistor and use Ohm's law again on this resistor or in this series combination of resistors. This maybe you want to write down. <laughs> this would be so great if we had time to really do all this uh, in, in detail. But um, okay, does this help at all? Write it down and maybe think about it. I think that's where I wanted to leave that. I hope you'll also study the thing about the wiring in the house. Maybe we'll get back to that some other time, but we do have to move on a little bit. Um, and some things I've left out, for example, I've left out the, what is a resistor made of, you know, and that the resistor, resistor has a resistance proportional to its length, inversely proportional to its area, and depends on the, the material of which it is made, the clogginess of this particular material. Um, so a resistor is a particular object, uh, which is um, just uh, one in which it impedes the current, and the current that does go through it loses some energy, which ends up heating up the, um, the, uh, the resistor, according to I squared R which is sometimes called the I squared R losses. So resistors absorb energy, which next we're going on to capacitors. Capacitors store energy. So th here, the energy actually is lost, and that's a useful process. That's what Thomas Edison used to make a light bulb. He made a wire with a very high resistance, and that was a good trick, such that the resistance was so high that his I squared R losses heated the wire up to, to where it glowed and gave off light. And that, of course, uh, is a world-changing event. It means that you, you don't get smoke when you have light, you just get light out of electricity, which is incredible. Uh, we don't take, it for, take much of a note of it now, but at the time, it was fab fabulous. Um, so I want you to understand how those uh, home circuits work because that's part of your life. And the idea of power being um, the, the energy loss per time or energy used over the time interval. Okay, so I want you to make sure you know that. Um, let me put this guy away if I may and uh, find another. Let's do capacitors as fast as we can. Um, it's a nice, it's an interesting subject. Uh, because actually, th th this is something that d does influence our lives. We use these things. Um, uh, so this is the outline of the subject. Uh, first, we have to figure out wh what do we mean by it, and then how it is used, I think is interesting. The uh, definition is, is of two obsolete charged bodies. In fact, you could even have one body and use the reference at infinity, but we'll typically we'll be talking about two plates which on which we have charge, or two objects which we have charge, and there's 